I'm Brent Weaver, and you're watching You Gurus, the must-watch web series to become a more profitable and in-demand web professional. Today, I'm in downtown Denver, Colorado, hanging out at full contact with their founder and CEO, Bart Lorang. Welcome to the program. Hey, glad to be here. So, why did you start Full Contact? So, it's actually a funny story. I started Full Contact because uh, around four and a half years ago or so, uh, I had exited my last company and um, I was changing platforms from Windows um, to Mac, right, and migrating all my contacts over. And around that time, I started dating uh, a girl who's now my wife. And uh, essentially, um, I looked at her contacts and they were immaculate. They were beautiful, they were gorgeous. She had about a, um, you know, 150 perfect contacts. Of course, I had about 6,000 totally crappy contacts, right? Out of date, incomplete, right? Just a mess, right? And I said, I want her contacts, sort of her methodology applied to my contacts. I want her contacts, basically, right? Um, and so we just started the company to fix my own address book problem. Turns out a lot of people have the contact information problem. I was gonna say, I think my contact list probably resembles more like your contact <laughs> yeah. list. Just, it's in like three different places. It's not even so, in one place. That's right. And then with the advent of social networking, it's actually getting worse, right? When you friend somebody or connect with somebody on every new social network, it's just is a, is a pain to deal with. So uh, fixing that and then, you know, also as an entrepreneur, um, fixing my company's contacts because the company's contacts is actually dispersed too between different business systems, whether they're CRMs, accounting systems, um, mailing applications, marketing applications, and then the people within the business, right? So I sort of like said, well, we can solve both of these problems with the common technology platform. So the elevator pitch for Full Contact. Yeah, Full Contact, uh, we want to be the world's contact management platform, but we do that by getting all your contacts in one place and keep them automatically up to date. So now, do you guys do like CRM, or are you literally just talking about the contact record? No, no, we are not a CRM. We actually just make the contact data great in whatever application or platform we touch. So, right. are, are so you we make CRMs better. Are right. you integrated into a bunch of mainstream CRMs already? Yeah, so we have a few integrations with like Salesforce, Highrise, things like that. Um, but we've actually focused more on the individual use case first, so sort of the Gmail and the sort of uh, iPhone, iPad, all those sort of consumery. Um, um, contact services and aggregating those. Have you always been a product guy? You know, it's interesting. I mean, I guess I've been an engineer, a product guy, sales guy, right? As an entrepreneur, you just have to wear multiple hats. So I can, I can shift gears pretty easily. What were you doing before Full Contact? Um, so I was running a uh, sort of enterprise software as a service company. Um, we focused in sort of the uh, enterprise master data management space, actually. All right, so um, you mentioned that Full Contact works for consumers or regular people, and yep. it works for businesses. I mean, That's right. who's your customer within that space? Is it just anybody and everybody that has contacts? Yeah, I mean, so the individuals, we find that um, the individual is actually a subset of sort of what, what I call the entrepreneur, the hustler, right? The person who builds their business or builds their life on their network, right? We find that there's a lot of C-level people, entrepreneurs, co-founders, right? Corp dev, biz dev, um, sort of in, in the individual segment. Um, and then in sort of the business segment, um, we find that very small enterprises, right, the people that sort of just have a small set of teams that want to share contacts, that's our core customer. So you guys went through Techstars 2011? 2011 in gotcha. Boulder, yeah. What was your driver for going through a startup accelerator versus just doing it yourself? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, the Techstars folks approached us and asked us to apply, and um, we did, and it, it made a lot of sense because it got us access to a big network. Um, it built our network very quickly. It built our contact list, right? Um, but essentially, uh, you know, it gave us quicker access to capital in terms of introductions to investors. And also, at the same time, really refined our pitch on what we were doing and made, it, made sure that we were crystal clear about that. Now, everybody talks about these pivots, right? You mm -hmm. go to these accelerators and it's all about the team and yeah. who knows if you're going to come out doing what you did when you came in. Were you guys pretty consistent on that or did you actually end up doing some pretty big pivots during the Yeah, program? I mean, we pivoted. Our, our company name was called Rainmaker. Then we launched that and then we had a product called Who Sent It. And really on the first day of Techstars, uh, David Cohen pulled us aside and said, I need to see in my office, right? And uh, that was a scary moment, because I thought, wow, we're kicked out of the program already. <laughs> um, but he pulled us aside and he just said, you know, you guys really need to focus on the API part of the business first, so the, so the data part first, because that's the really hard bit, and then build up from there. And, uh, and then we said, that's really, really hard though, and he said, that's exactly why you should do it. And so we did some customer validation after that. Turns out 
that uh, he was right on the hypothesis. And so we, 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 we took it from there and we rebranded the company as Full Contact. So now the API layer, you guys out of the box made that accessible to developers. Was that yes. a big part of your go-to-market strategy? Yeah, absolutely, right? Because we feel that this data should be open and portable and available in every application. So what better way to do that than provide an API to software developers to plug into their own apps to consume full contact um, information? It feels like SendGrid-ish for context, right? I yeah. mean, they're, they're doing email, hardcore yeah. API. You guys are doing contacts. Yep. How many contacts are you guys currently managing? We have about 1.3 billion unique contacts under management. So that's like a good portion. 20% of, of the planet. <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's, that's pretty right. cool. Yeah. How does that work between, like, let's say I have a contact, right? Yeah. Like you're in my address book. Yeah. Are you guys cross referencing that to somebody else's address book? Like, so, how does that work? So the information that, that, that you send to full contact remains and always remains private. We do use the information to improve our deduplication algorithms and understand who's who, um, but we, we make sure never to release any of that private information to other folks, right, and cross-pollinate that. So that billion unique contacts, that's unique people. Unique people. Yeah. Wow, yeah. very cool. Mm -hmm. So what's the makeup of your team right now? So we've got about 40 people, a little over 40 people, uh, we're about two-thirds engineering, and then some product, and then uh, a few finance and admin folks, and, uh, and then we've got about uh, six folks on the sales team and a few people on the marketing team. What's been the, the culture like for you guys? So it's been interesting, right, with, uh, with Full Contact. I think um, you know, we had a, a really large media splash a couple of years ago with our paid, paid vacation policy. And I saw a picture of you <laughs> that I recognized <laughs> from like TechCrunch or something, yeah. right? It's like you on the camel. It's yeah. like sitting right over there. Yeah, <laughs> that's sort of a. I don't know if you want to go off that bunny trail. We can talk about that, but uh, yeah, I mean, basically, it was like this blog post I wrote where I just felt compelled to make sure that we give a what's called a paid paid vacation policy is because. In this profession, sometimes we don't get off the grid enough and we don't disconnect. And, and there's that picture of me on the camel in front of the, the pyramids in Egypt, and I'm literally checking my iPhone email, right? Just terrible. And that camera is sort of famous, and my fiance wasn't too happy with me. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I decided, you know, it's really important for people to disconnect from devices in modern society. And let's incentivize people to do that by providing them a $7,500 stipend to go on vacation wherever they want. They just have to disconnect. Right. Is that every year? Yeah, every year every employee gets that benefit once a year. And that's something you guys have continued to? Yeah, and so that culture along with, we got powder day policies and um, um, things like that where we have a lot of trust in our employees. But uh, um, our culture is really built around, um, I think, freedom and, uh, and responsibility, right? So that's what it's all about. In terms of uh, investments, so you guys went through Techstars. Did you guys take on funding, I'm assuming? Yeah, we raised about $1.8 million coming out of Techstars. Uh, from High Country Ventures and a bunch of angels around town. And have you gone, had to go back and raise more money, or are you guys pretty well customer-funded now? So we actually raised another $7 million a year later from Founder Group and Brad Feld, um, led our next financing round. Um, yeah. Very cool. So it seems like pretty rapid ramp yeah. up. Yeah. Yep. Things are growing, growing well. Very nice. On, on a personal level, Bart, like what kind of habits have you kept up with over the years? Like any daily, weekly, or monthly practices um, that you try to keep on top of that have helped you get to where you are? Yeah, I mean, from a personal productivity standpoint, um, you know, I actually try to ride public transportation. I live in Boulder, and our headquarters are in Denver, and I ride the bus every day, which wow. gives me an extra hour and a half to two hours of time where I'm not like driving. And so I get me time, and I always make sure to carve out some me time for, for myself every, uh, every day, right, regardless of what that is. So, so give me some examples of what you fill BART time with. So I might write a blog post. Um, I might just consume and, and, and you know, just read um, like a lot of different posts, blog posts. Um, I'll read the news. Um, sometimes I'll catch up with email, right? Um, you know, so I'm, I'm not as good about it as I want to be. Sometimes I'll, I'll get a workout in, right? Um, but... Like on the bus? Not on the bus, <laughs> sometimes before and then catch the bus. I can just see uh, some guy like with dumbbells but like yeah. sitting there. I mean, a lot of times, sometimes I'll actually read like fiction, right? Like gotcha. Game of Thrones or something, right? So For sure. Mm -hmm. When it comes to sales and marketing, yep. what's something that has worked really well for you guys? Yeah, so um, our, our, our sales leader is Ben Data, and he's sort of an ex-Marine um, recruiter, so he basically knows how to run very strict sales process. Um, we've actually found an inside outbound sales methodology has worked well for us um, in terms of um, actually just cold calling 
um, has actually been a great approach for us. Um, it's unusual, but we have such a target market that's so specific, it's worked well. In addition, we've done some inbound marketing that's worked fantastically. Uh, we write a lot of content and put it on our blog. We have a weekly playbook that has a, like, sort of the best of the web. That's not very, it's not a salesy thing, but it's just like great, really, really curated content. And all of that has worked very well in terms of growing our funnel, both from a sales funnel and a marketing funnel. You mentioned cold calling, yep. right? So you, in a really tight target market, yep. can you expand on that a little bit? Because it seems yeah, like yeah. you guys have this broad target yeah, we have market. Our, yeah, but the thing is, for, that's really around our API platform business where we've got um, you know, software applications in general that should want to consume our API. We've got to build awareness about that. And the way we do that is actually calling on product managers right, that manage different software applications right, and showing them this cool feature they can actually have now. Right, and so uh, that's building awareness and um, you know sales process there. Gotcha. So looking for the product managers, the software devs to start to that's plug right. in their SaaS right. apps to right. your app. That's right. Gotcha. What kind of trends are you guys following right now? Um, we look at the overall SaaS market in general, right, and then the overall social network in general. Um, so we basically take a look at the sort of it's it's expanding tremendously, and um, we're seeing a fracturing of of, of data and and more fracturing of speci specific niche apps. Um, so those are the trends that we, we like to look at. So do you guys see yourself kind of fitting into all of those different spaces? Yeah. The, the more sort of best of breed apps there are, the better for us because most of them require contact data and the more silos there are of contact data, we can bring it all together and be the sort of hub of the, all those folks. Gotcha, so the more, the more chaos in my life, the more money you guys That's make. right, that's right. <laughs> so what's one thing that you would tell a startup entrepreneur or web professional that you wish you knew, say, 10 years ago when you were starting out or 15 years ago? Um, you know, as far as, uh, <laughs> I would say just learn how to code, right? Um, that's the one thing, like don't be, t don't be um, a technical dummy, right? Basically make sure you invest in those skills constantly because it pays off whether, whether you're in a technical role or not. As an entrepreneur, it certainly helps to have a technical background as I do, right? And I see a lot of people don't, don't go down that path, but anybody can teach themselves um, something new every week. Are you still developing? Uh, I don't, I don't have time, unfortunately, but uh, you know, I, can, I can hold my own. So, so keep developing until you don't have to anymore. That's right. Very That's right. cool. So what's next for Full Contact? You know, next is, um, I mean, basically we're going to be rolling out uh, some big releases soon with uh, our iPhone, iPad, and Mac apps, right, which is going to be huge and fantastic. And uh, we'll probably double our team size over the next year from 40 to 80 people. And we're going to move office spaces, actually, somewhere else in downtown Denver. Um, but uh, those, are the, those are the big things I've, I've got on my plate. So, so doubling your team size, I mean, in terms of, yeah. that's a lot of people to hire. Yeah. So... Are you guys looking at these like vacation policies and things like that as a way to attract engineers, sure. or how are you guys actually going? Out yeah, and it's a general, that? general sort of recruiting uh, method methodology. But really, well, I always find the best people are actually just people who refer other folks into their um, that they know and trust, sort of into the organization. That's the best source of candidates. Gotcha. So developers and hiring their friends yeah, and their friends, their friends. Their friends. great people. They know great people, right? pretty simple. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, we really appreciate you joining us today on the program. Okay. Uh, wish you guys the best of luck at Full Contact and uh, hope to have you back maybe once you get your new offices and we can tour those digs as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. All Good right. to have you. Well, that's it. Stay tuned for more great content from yougurus.com. I just got from, back from Paris last night, so I didn't shave. Well, my <laughs> wife will be upset with the neck beard, but whatever. We'll just go with it. <laughs>